and welcome to Return to Dark Tower. Now this is a game that has been covered by quite a few folks and I, uh, the only thing I can offer that hasn't already been covered by them is none of them have covered the expansions. At least not um, to the level that I'm going to. Like they maybe mention them in passing or they just show a basic game. So um, uh, we're gonna just jump right in. And uh, normally I do a uh, setup video and then uh, let's play, you know, in the next video. But we're gonna just jump right in and go. This is a, a game that is driven by an app. And I know some people love and hate those kind of games, but to me, this game is perfect with an app. Um, it uh, The app makes this game so much more fun than trying to manage the cards uh, or the AI uh, yourself. Um, this game is for one to four players. We're gonna play it with just one player, which I've never done before. Uh, I have played this game seven times though. Uh, norm that's a lot of times. Most of the time when I cover a game, I'm literally recording the very first playthrough alongside you. That's not the case here. I've played this many times. I got the rules down. I um, You're gonna get a pretty solid playthrough. So don't worry about that part of it. Um, I, I will criticize it real quick. Uh, as a solitaire player, you got this big tower, which is, uh, you know, it's both awesome and it's like the penultimate um, sign of board game gluttony, you know? Uh, this game would probably cost $100 less, you know, retail if you didn't have this big tower in the middle. <laughs> um, this tower uh, burns batteries. The designer got on Board Game Geek and says that these batteries last a long time. I find that to be total bunk. I go through a complete set of batteries in three games. So I am on my third set of batteries right now. We will be starting the eighth game of this. And yeah, I know if you do the math real quick, you'll be like, how are you already on your third set? Um, well, actually, yeah, yeah, I am on my third set. The first set was um, was very old, and so I'm not sure those were fully charged is what I was trying to get at. Um, but, uh, but basically, uh, I did have a full set I put in, and I played three games, and then I had to replace that brand new set. Um, and so, yeah, I'm on my third set right now. Uh, it is very annoying that it uses AA batteries and um, and it burns through them like nothing. It, you know, this game is a nostalgic game because it came out in the 80s and burning through batteries is also part of the nostalgia of the 80s. The only thing that I can remember from the 80s that burned batteries quicker than Dark Tower was um, uh, laser tag. And uh, laser tag, <laughs> of course, was its own little animal and it used to take, it took like 12 AA batteries and then you'd get it most maybe four hours of play, and then you'd have to replace all 12 of them. It was ridiculous. But um, uh, I don't know why they kept that uh, awful battery usage. Uh, they could have, um, like, I would have preferred that it used the, the you know, the lithium ion ones, you know, the little flat ones, and just something other than double A's. But, um, but it is what it is. Uh, the other thing is, is when you're playing by yourself, which, like I said, I've never done before, but it's not going to be that different of a game. Um, when you look at the game board, there's a whole quarter of the game board over there that's not visible. So you're going to have to constantly do this and do this. Um, it's not very fun. This game is superb at two players. Um, and, and, and it's not like it's superb. Like, I'm not recommending that you, uh, you, you know, play both sides, you know, and, and control two players. What I mean is, is that you have somebody sitting on the other side of the tower so they can manage the stuff on that side of the board while you manage the stuff on this side. It makes the game go a lot quicker. Um, I have played this at all player counts. Uh, it, this is the first time playing it at one player, but two, three, and four, I have played all three of those player counts. Um, they are uh, The game scales pretty nicely. I will say I think the game is harder at four than it is at two. And it's largely because of this mechanic that I haven't explained yet in the game. But the game, um, when these buildings get destroyed, uh, you gain corruption. And I, you know, again, I haven't explained what all that means. But um, if you're playing in a lower player count and a building gets destroyed in a region that is not a home region to one of the players, it doesn't hurt you, at least not as much. And um, that is a huge advantage in terms of like, how easy is the game to beat? Um, my win ratio is around 60%. 
If you look on the app, it's going to tell you 100%, but that's lies. Because um, what happens is, is when we lose, we still we just kept playing because we wanted to see how it played out. Um, and so, yeah, we, we technically lost the game, but we still wanted to see how the final boss, you know, battle worked and, you know, uh, stuff like that. So, um, so we technically, according to the app, have won every game we've played, but that's absolutely not true. Um, when we have lost the game, and this is a criticism of the game, uh, it happens fast. Like, you have the game completely in control, and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 three things happen, and boom, the game's over. And you're asking yourself, what just happened? And um, uh, it's a criticism, because, you know, a lot of people like board games where you can feel like your strategy is helping you to control and mitigate the risks. Well, Sometimes the risks just bite you in the butt. And, and that's the way, you know, co-op games work in general. All right, so I'm not going to, like I said, I, wanna, I don't want to belabor it too much. Let's just get going. The biggest thing, uh, and I'll try to explain the difference between the expansion and the regular, is uh, first things first, is you have to get all the buildings on the region. So we have, you can see there's a river here and a river here, and this makes up what's called the west region. So there's a north, south, east, west region. And each of those are going to be a region that are going to be a home region to a player in a four-player game. But in a one-player game, we're going to pick just one of these regions, and then the other three are going to be what's called dormant regions. And they're still active in the game. Don't let the word dormant fool you. It just means that it's not our home region. And uh, in that special rule I was telling you about where if a building blows up, um, uh, it's not going to hurt us as much. Also, I want to say a huge congratulations to... A viewer, one of the original viewers I've had on this channel, um, very active and still uh, a longtime watcher all the way from the beginning days. Uh, his name is Andrew, and Andrew just had his first child last week, and I just want to say a huge congratulations. I um, I forgot the name, Andrew. I, I'd have to go look it up, <laughs> so I don't want to get it wrong on on uh, on the on the recording here. But he had a daughter, that much I know. It was last week. She's healthy. Mom's healthy. Everybody's doing great. I'm sure Andrew is still excited and happy. And maybe, uh, you know, in, during feedings or whatnot, he'll have time to pick up this and, and be able to hear this message. Andrew, you're a great friend. And uh, uh, I just can't say enough, uh, as a father myself, how big of a journey you got in front of you. And, and I mean that in a positive, positive way. Um, children change your life. And, and for me, it was for the best. And I can't imagine my life without one. And I know you are now in that journey yourself. And um, best wishes to you, my friend. Okay, so back to this game. Now that we understand the regions, there's, you can see written on the board here, it says Citadel. And you just got to know that this is the Citadel building. I... I don't. I think the the rules has a picture of them. At first, it's a little confusing, but once you start playing, it sort of all makes sense. Like the sanctuary is just this open court, whereas the village, you know, these two together side by side, they look similar, but they really aren't. Um, you eventually figure it out. So, the village, and then you have a bazaar over here. Um, you have to set this up in every region. And their locations are going to be different. So, for example, the citadel's right here in the middle north. Over here on this one, the citadel's right along the river. And so they do change up uh, from place to place. Now, you may notice there's this little flag here. That little flag is an expansion thing, and that is for the guild. And so the Thieves' Guild is in this region, and that's this. Now, at the start of the game, uh, you uh, place this uh, randomly. So there's four of them, of course, one for each region. And there's an A side and a B side. The B side is considered harder. So we're going to do the more difficult one, the B side. And then each um, guild has what's known as uh, companions. And it'll say on the back side here, Thieves Guild, with that little lock symbol. And so that's how you know that these are the Thieves Guild guys, right? And then you're supposed to shuffle them and place them in order. Another criticism of the game is that some of these are useless if they end up over here versus here. Um, I sort of agree. So from a design perspective, some of these guys are better suited to be up in the front than they are in the back. And uh, in the order of these is like the order that you would receive them in the game. 
by the time you get this last one, it could be really late in the game, and and uh, those companions are pretty much worthless. Um, the rules do say to randomize them, and uh, and then you could end up with some pretty wonky, you know, orders. Uh, you know, I'm sure designers will say, yeah, that was intentional. That's what it's supposed to be. Um, you know, because luck is luck, right? But um, some of my buddies have said that they wished that they could pick the order. And I was like, it's your own game. Do what you want, right? Just because the rules say one thing doesn't mean you have to follow it. But as a recording thing, you got to be true to the rules. Um, and I'm trying to be true to the rules for you. But at the same time, explain to you maybe a little variant that your, your house may want to do. Okay, um, so we get one of these on each one. And then you're going to have a little token that goes here. Uh, we are um, going to have to pick who we are going to be. Uh, now, um, with the expansion, I have actual miniatures for the uh, quest monuments. Uh, otherwise, you will have standees that are crappy. And the moment you try to pick it up, the base falls out and it falls apart. Um, uh, good luck to you uh, with that. Um, they are the absolute lowest quality you could ever imagine. But that's what comes with the base game. Uh, you will also, with the expansion, get this, which is their lazy way of, um, you know, adding an extra action to the game that's not in the base game. <clears throat> um, it is a criticism that I think they deserve, uh, and it's largely because they give you two new heroes in the expansion, and they didn't even bother putting the extra action on those two new heroes, so you got to use this even on the new heroes. <laughs> it makes no sense. Um... We found that these cards are especially helpful. These are cards that have like pictures of the enemies, but the thing that's important is understanding the keywords that are on the enemies. Uh, so please have that near. Uh, you're gonna have some tokens that are gonna be similar to this. It'll have <coughs> the names of the enemies on them. You're gonna have to have those available. I am not using those because I have miniatures for all the enemies. And so, um, we don't need those tokens anymore, uh, and that's more reason why those cards are very important for us. Uh, you're going to have a gear deck. So the gear gets laid out. There's six pieces of gear, three copies of each, and those are just available for all players. And then uh, you will have a potion deck. You will shuffle. You will have a companion deck that's not to be confused with the companions that go with the guilds. These companions uh, just get set to the side. You do not need to shuffle. You have a quest item deck, don't need to shuffle. Uh, these come out based on uh, the quests. You're gonna have like these test of uh, deck, which we've never found the boss that uses these yet. So uh, there's a boss in the game that must use these. I have played seven games, like I said, and we've never encountered this yet. Uh, I'm sure it's it's coming. And then um, uh, the undead, there's uh, different dungeons. So it'll look like this. And, uh, and so that's like a bit of a testament to this game. I've played this seven times. I've only played the same boss twice. And that's the one they recommend for your very first time playing. Um, so that's technically six unique times I've played this game. And I still haven't encountered the boss that uses these tokens. So um, there's a lot of uh, variety in this game. And each boss really is different. And that is one of the reasons... As much as I gave some criticism about this game, this is a fantastic game. Uh, I I usually don't like games that are this light, but this game is a very fun light game. And it's not as light as you might think, but, um, you know, compared to like, um, you know, D-Day at Omaha Beach, this game is much lighter than that. But it is a fun game. I I personally, I want to play again and again with this one. It's uh, It's so fun. Okay. So uh, continuing on, uh, you're going to get uh, tokens like this. These are virtues that belong to the, the character when you select them. And we'll go over that in a second. These river of fires, they will be used if you start with the boss that the game recommends that you start with. Otherwise, they will be basically sitting out of the game. And then there's um, spore tokens and siege trees. Those also go with uh, particular bosses. Uh, you will have a treasure deck that you just need to shuffle. And then after you shuffle, oh, how are we going to do this? We're going to move some stuff around here. And then we're going to draw four of these. One, two, three, four, like so. Okay. Um, now, in the base game, 
There's only three of these that gets drawn. I think I saw a video with um, Rodney Smith, and I think he got it wrong. Uh, I think he drew four. I could be wrong, because I've watched several videos on this, but there's a, one of the video people got it wrong, and my apologies, Rodney, if it wasn't you, um, but one of the video people got this wrong, and you draw four cards when you have the expansion pack. You only draw three cards if you have the base game. So it's a big difference, and um, uh, you need to make sure you get it right. But in our case, we're playing the expansion, so you get to draw four. And I think what happened was is that the video I was watching, they had the expansion pack, but they were only demonstrating the base game, and they ended up drawing four, if I remember correctly. So anyways, that's wrong, and trust me, I've made many real mistakes in my life, so uh, no judgment here. Um, and then uh, there's this new... Uh, thing called influence which uh, is only in the expansion and you start the game with eight it doesn't matter what the player count is there's always eight influence and that is a uh, global pool that's meant to be shared amongst all players um, when you're playing by yourself of course solo um, it doesn't matter uh, it's really just yours but uh, you get the gist uh, you're gonna have some skulls the white skulls are from the base game the Power colored skulls are from the expansion. Set those off to the side. You will need one of these. Just if anything, it's just to help you understand that there's an extra action in the expansion. And uh, that's all you need. Let's get going. So we are 16 minutes in. So um, uh, that's not too bad of an introduction. Uh, so here's what we're gonna have to do next. We have to select our character, and then we're gonna fire up the app, turn on the tower, and then the tower is going to step us through some setup steps. So we're not going to actually get to start playing uh, at least for another 10 minutes. Um, because there, the, the app and everything, there's quite a few steps we go through to get the game set up. But I'll do the best I can, and then let's get rocking. Okay, so um, just doing a time check. I do have to be somewhere, so I'm going to have to, you know, end this video. Okay, so uh, we have some heroes here, and uh, the way it basically works is um, we have uh, the Relic Hunter, and this is what they start the game with, and all of them start the game with seven soldiers and one uh, spirit, which you can see over here, seven soldiers and one spirit. Um, and then every character has what they, what they call a banner action that's done at the start of the turn. This is unique for each character. And then this is not unique for each character. In the middle of the turn, they can move three spaces, uh, although one character can move four. Um, so I guess it's unique for that character. Uh, but um, there's a heroic action where you get one of these three actions, but that's actually now four actions. Um, and then there's a reinforce action where there's one of four actions. And you get to do all three of these. So you get to do a move, and you can split it as you need. You can do one of these and one of these, and you get to do all three of those on your turn. And then anytime you do this action, you gain two spirit just for doing the action. Um, and then at the end of your turn, you drop a skull into the tower, and it acts like a little bit of like a dice tower, um, except uh, the skull sometimes gets stuck in the tower, like not in a bad way, but like intentionally, because the tower doesn't always spit everything out right away. Um, and then on the right, you have what's called virtues. Every character starts the game with two virtues. They're going to get a virtue. For example, if we start in the West, you would get Champion of the West, and you would get that virtue as a third virtue. And then the final three virtues are going to be locked, and you have to unlock them as you play the game. So um, I'm going to really quickly go over these with you, and then we have to pick one. So this Relic Hunter, you gain a potion, and then they basically have virtues that... Um, the most powerful one is... Um, uh, well, this one here is nice because you, when you reinforce at a bazaar, you can buy a treasure for one less spirit. That's quite powerful. Uh, but the most powerful one is he gets to double the number on a potion. So if a potion gives you six soldiers... And don't ask me how a potion gives you soldiers. I, I'm just assuming it's some kind of like charm potion. Um, he can get 12 for that same one because he gets to double the number. Um, I would rate him in the middle. Like we have these rated 
and we've played every one of them. This guy I would put in the middle to the bottom. He uh, He's good. Uh, I think you'll have a good time playing him, but he's not the best. I'll just put it that way. This Spy Master has a banner action that lets him teleport anywhere in the kingdom that he starts out in. So it's basically he can uh, instant move anywhere. Um, this is the weakest banner action of all of them. Uh, it does come in handy sometimes, but it's really not, you know, powerful. He also starts with one extra movement due to this over here. His, um, and, that, and that's incorporated over here. The extra movement is more than enough to make up for this. Like, you don't even need this. Just that extra movement is enough. Um, so we, we find this to be super weak. With that being said, he has some virtues that allows him to get two reinforce actions. So he gets to do, so when he does this reinforce action, he gets to do it twice. Not just once, but twice. And that is phenomenal. And um, he also has the ability to get free soldiers every month. He has very, very powerful virtues. So if you start the game with this guy, he's a little weak to start, but he gets super powerful if you can unlock his virtues. So that would be your priority with this guy is you need to unlock his virtues early. And if you do, this guy is right up near the top in terms of power. Okay, so, um, but we still put him towards the middle uh, because he starts the game weak. And uh, you do have to like play him a specific way in order to unleash his power. But he is very, very good. This one uh, we single-handedly think is the best guy in the game. Um, or, or lady in the game, right? It's the Orphan Scion. Um, some of the reasons is magic seems to be used more than anything. But she is the Cleanse Master. This game has a pandemic-type mechanic where those skulls... Those skulls are bad, and if they accumulate on the buildings, uh, once you get a fourth one, the building blows up, right, and gets destroyed. So she can go around and clean them better than anybody else. She has, like, like she has this, after you cleanse, she gets to remove a skull from any other building that's on the map. Super, super powerful. Uh, it's really hard to argue. Um, having her, especially in a four-player game, is phenomenal. This one... Uh, it, we agree, hands down, is the crappiest character in the game. It's an expansion character. It's called the Haunted Recluse. She is the only one that starts with an undead advantage, and her banner is she can move a skull from any building to any other building that has two or less. Um, and then when a skull emerges in her kingdom, she can place it somewhere else, in somebody else's kingdom if she wants. Um, most of her abilities is she wants skulls to be on the board, uh, we want the skulls to be off the board, but she wants them on, and if they are on, she gets special abilities. It's crap. It's not Scottish, so it's crap. Um, we absolutely hate this character. No one who has played this character has found it to be fun. Um, like, her, her strength comes from doing the opposite of what you need to do to win the game. Uh, the factions that we just talked about, like the Thieves Guild, you need to have buildings that are free of any skulls, and if they are, then you get influence points, so you can make your faction uh, go up a level. And then she wants skulls on the buildings, um, so she wants the exact opposite of what everybody else wants in order for her to achieve her goals. It's crap. We absolutely hate this character. Um, I think the designers were struggling to come up with a, a final bonus character for the expansion, and they flopped hard on that one. The last one here, or next one here, is the Arkwright, and the Arkwright is another expansion one. The Arkwright gets to put these battlement tokens on the board and gives everybody an advantage, and then she herself gets a plus two instead of plus one. Um, she's pretty good. Uh, as far as expansion goes, this is a really good character. We put her um, probably at the same level as that stealth character. Um, she's good from the start all the way through. Um, her uh, abilities are not as powerful as the stealth character, but she starts off more powerful than the stealth character. And from the beginning, very, very good character. Uh, definitely recommend. Um, and it's good uh, when you have um, four players. Uh, she can really help other players the most. And then this one here, we agreed, is also near the top. So the Scion or the Br Brutal Warlord are the two best. And the reason is the Brutal Warlord gets soldiers every turn. And then has a virtue that lets them get even more. So they're basically getting 11 soldiers a turn, and you just can't beat that. Um, there is, 
very little. Uh, like, the other virtues aren't quite as powerful, but the fact that you're getting 11 soldiers a turn, you can basically go into any dungeon, especially if it's going to cost you warriors, and you're just fearless. And, and you can feed everybody else through trading, and so they get warriors because you're, you're a constant warrior-generating machine. So Brutal Warlord, if it's your first game, I highly recommend you pick one of these. Uh, this and the Orphan Scion, if you have a two-player game, is the perfect combo uh, to win any match um, that, that's here. And every time we've ever lost, it's because we didn't choose this and the Orphan Scion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think we've lost when we've had the Brutal Warlord and the Orphan Scion. Okay, so um, I'm going to wait, and we will select who we're going to be after the game fires up and finishes the setup. Because uh, here's why. The enemies have different weaknesses. So um, you can see that's Melee Undead. This is Stealth Undead. Well, we're not going to ever have both of those in the game. So let's say I had Empress of Shades. And then the Widowmaker Spider, and then the uh, Spine Fiend, right? And there's another type of, that would be in the game as well. But let's just say we had these three. Well, I'm looking for some synergies here. Uh, there's a Stealth Weakness in two of these, right? Um, so if I play as the Stealth character, which, um, you know, is that guy uh, that gets more powerful as the game goes on, he starts the game with an advantage against Stealth. So uh, I may want to choose that character because stealth is going to be important. I can take on this monster and the final boss um, a lot easier with that character. So it's the way your mind needs to work. Um, if there was, uh, for example, there's no uh, humanoid is one of the types. And it's not written on any of these. So playing as the potion hunter. See, so look at the potion hunter here. He gets an advantage against humanoid. That's a poor choice for this selection of monsters. And so the selection of monsters that are going to be in the game, uh, you should really use that to dictate which character you start with. So maybe you want to try the Potion Hunter because, you know, Jeff said he's not bad. He's just not the best. Well, in this case, he would not be as good. Um, but there's, you know, there's other ones in here that are humanoid. And, you know, for example, Gaze Eternal is a humanoid final boss. And... You know, there's other, you know, the Frost Trolls are humanoid. The Brigands are humanoid. Like, there's a lot of humanoid out there. It's just that these aren't the ones that were selected for this particular, you know, game. Then, you know, maybe it's not the best choice. That's all I'm trying to get at. All right, so I'm going to set these aside. And let's get the app fired up. And let's get going. Okay, so of course all my fingerprints are going to show up on the glare. So the app is called Return to Dark Tower. Uh, Restoration Games has its own app. I don't know why this is not inside of the Restoration Games app. It's, it's, this is its own special app. Makes no sense to me. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. I mean, the, the music's not bad. Um, it gets a little annoying. You know, when people are trying to talk over it or whatever. But I'm just giving you a sense for it. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it down. Okay, and then the uh, the tower itself. If any of you played the original game, you recognize that sound. Uh, that's a very nostalgic sound. And the tower lights up. It is, as far as towers go, I know they uh, talked about that this was quite a sophisticated piece of work. I would agree. It's very sophisticated, which is why it's burning through the batteries so much. Um, it's a pretty awesome tower. I I can't, you know, you know, a lot of games have um, these gimmicks in them that, you know, you know, the whole centerpiece of the game is, you know, what the game is centered around. I have to confess, this tower is a fantastic centerpiece and it works like really well. It has a fully functional uh way of of making the game you know and impacting the game um like i said it blocks my view from the rest of the board and then it burns through batteries that's my only two complaints um fantastic tower otherwise uh let's go ahead and get going 
So we're going to go ahead and start a new game. And so now it's telling you to turn on the tower and make sure it's on a steady surface. So I'm um, going to hit next. And it's actually using Bluetooth. So you need to have Bluetooth turned on in your app. And uh, it's calibrating the tower. So there's three um, levels of the tower and they're spinning around internally. And it's basically doing a, a check. And then of course the tower is roaring at you and it's telling you the tower is ready. Okay, so you could play a competitive game. I've actually never done that. Uh, we're doing cooperative and we have the alliances expansion. Um, the gritty difficulty I read only just reduces the number of turns you have, which um, uh, I'm not sure how much fun that is. Um, oh, one other thing. There's this concept in the game called months. You have like six months to beat the game. Uh, it's been my experience that six months is more than enough to beat every game we've played, even the ones we've lost. Um, so I think that the time frame they give you is decent. When you first start playing, you'll be like, oh my God, how am I supposed to beat this in six months? But it really does work out. I, I you know, it, it feels like it's bad math, but it, it does work out. Uh, the other thing is, is that the very first month, you only get one action, just one. So in a four player game, you're going to get four actions that first month. In a one player game, you're only going to get one action. So that's where the advantage goes to the four players. But um, afterwards, the first player gets like, it's and it's random now, um, but on average, you get around five or six actions a month. In a two-player game, you're going to get around three actions a month each, and we're talking each. In a three- or four-player game, it's two actions a month each, where the third three-player game, like one or two players is going to get three. The other two will get two. Um, so they're like teetering. So in a four-player game, you're only going to get two actions a month. Um, in a one-player game, you get a lot more. So it sort of balances out. Um, I think in a four-player game, it's really tight because if you know you only get two actions this month, you will have 100 things you want to do, and then there's things you have to do, and that's going to like really dictate your, your moves. If you're playing a two-player game, you get three actions a month, so chances are... Two of those actions, you're going to have to do the things you have to do. But then you're going to at least have one action a month where you get to do what you want to do. And to be quite honest, that's more enjoyable. Um, so I think I'm going to enjoy the solitaire because now I get to do six actions a month. But but I do have to confess that, you know, four of those actions is going to be we have to do this. And, and I'm probably only going to get one or two, still only going to get one or two where I get to have fun. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and go. I'm gonna play a one player game. And this is the one they recommend you do if it's your very first time. We've been hitting random. All right, we just played this one actually literally last night. Um, it's a good one. I don't wanna play it again, so let's try again. I've never played this one before. Um, yeah, let's do this one. I've never done this one before. So, uh, let's do, now this is the boss they recommend that you start the game with, uh, but again, uh, I'm going to just do random. I've done Lingering Rot before. In fact, I don't know if there, how many of these I haven't done. I actually never did this one before. You get the black mark item. This actually sounds horrible. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay, and then this one here, of course, I've done all four of these. To be quite honest, the brigands are the worst. They drive me nuts because they make you lose items. Um, the other ones are more manageable. Uh, the shadow wolves, though, they, they totally, like, there's always in pairs. There's two of them on the board. They spawn in pairs. So those are annoying for that reason. Um... If I had to choose which one I prefer, I would say the Oryx. Um, but it's not about what I prefer. We're going to do random. And sure enough, we got the Brigands for this one. And then this one, uh, we got the Clan of Nuri, which I've only ever seen once. So it'll be interesting to get them back again. And then for this one, 
it looks like they gave us the Titan. So the Titan is the level four foe. And you can see there's dragons, Mormos, Strigas, and Titans. Striga is the one I've played the most with. Um, the dragon is super nasty. They destroy buildings. Um, the Striga gives you uh, corruption. But anyways, we have the Titan here. Um, and there we go. So two, three, and four. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording real quick and get out the miniatures for this. Okay, so um, what I did was I got out the... Uh, well, let's go back to here. This is the, the mission we're going to do. The main goal is Grieger. I've never done this before. I've never had this... Uh, final boss before either, so that'll be interesting. And then we have Brigands, Nurai, and Titan. Now what that did was that created a very interesting situation for us. Um, I got out the cards for them. And so you can see that the this is Magic Humanoid, Melee Humanoid, Stealth Humanoid, and Stealth Humanoid. So um, Humanoid is in all four of them. Uh, stealth is in two of the four. And so that created an interesting conundrum for me. Um, the one character who has humanoid advantage is the Relic Hunter. So he starts with plus one humanoid advantage. Um, but I want to like temper this. As much as I like tailoring who I pick to match against the, um, the, the guys I'm going up against, a one single advantage is not, you know, super awesome. I mean, it's a great start to have one advantage, um, but it doesn't mean that it's like the be-all, end-all. Um, being the, uh, the potion, the relic hunter, and handling the potions, I think it could be an interesting game. Um, I don't know how confident I feel that I can play a strong game with the relic hunter. Like, I think the relic hunter's good, but I think it's good if you're paired up with other players who are you know, carrying different aspects of the game. I don't know. I mean, the Relic Hunter could work. It really could. Um, maybe I should do it. I, I, I was going to pick the Spy Master here because he starts with Stealth, and Stealth is two of the four, and it's the one that goes up against the final boss. Like, it's nice to have matching with the final boss. Um, so two of the four is Stealth, so, like, I you know, it's not all four of them. And then what happens is, is this guy gets, um, he moves four spaces and he can teleport. So that helps a lot with, um, since it's a single player game. Like I said, I've never played Solitaire before on this. But um, all four realms are active in the game. So you got to move around and deal with crap all across the, the game. And I'm, I'm just concerned that, uh, you know, being able to transport and like, like instantly teleport... Um, and have extra movement points actually might be valuable in a solitaire game because you can get around the board and chase things down quicker. With that being said, if there's those of you who love the Relic Hunter, you're probably just screaming at the screen right now. Yeah, but there's potions that give you plus three movement points. You're absolutely right. <laughs> so actually the, the potion guy could do the job. Um, uh, the other thing was uh, there's a particular one here and this is a virtue you'd have to unlock, but it says you can reinforce twice per turn at the same building. Reinforcing twice per turn at the same building, what that means is you get to do this action twice. And so basically for every, there's, this is an action economy game. Every time it's your turn, you get to do this once, one of these once, and one of these once. And what that's saying is you get to do one of these a second time for free. And this can be huge to be able to do that twice. Um, that's why I like I like the Spy Master more than I like the Relic Hunter. Um, and I know some of you might be thinking, well, just make up your mind already. And um, uh... Okay. I think I'm I'm torn. Now I want to play two players. And like let's just put both of them in the game, right? The spy master and the, the relic hunter. But I already told the game we're only doing one player. Um You know what? Uh we'll do what I recommended. We'll do the 
let's do the humanoid guy. Why not? If I lose, I lose. I mean, I guess, why am I being so worried about losing while I'm on camera? Because I'm bragging about how I've won so many times, right? Um, okay, so we'll do the, the Relic Hunter. And yeah, he starts the game with seven warriors and one of these. Uh, he gets some... Um, So his virtues at the start is he gets a humanoid advantage. We haven't talked about what advantage is, but you've probably gotten the gist by now that having advantages helps you in battles. And it helps you a lot, in fact. Um, when you reinforce at a bazaar, you get treasures for one less, so that's never bad. When you spend, not lose, a treasure, you gain the top card of a treasure deck. So as soon as you spend a treasure, you get one back. Um, this is good, but I've never unlocked it. Um, this one, you can spend four potions to remove a foe, so you don't have to battle him at all. You can just remove him. And then there's this one. When you spend a potion, you get double the number. This is the powerful one. Super, super powerful. This is what makes the character uh, great again. Um, okay. So now, uh, the, now that we picked our guy, we're going to be the guy with the blue base. So it's this little dude here. I don't know if the focus is coming in. But um, we have to pick a realm that we're going to start in. And um, the, the different guilds uh, make a difference. So, for example, the Thieves Guild here um, has some really nice companions that can help uh, in different ways. Um, this Beast one is actually a really good one. Um, this is a tough realm to start in because you lose items when you start in this realm. Um, just at the end of the turn, if you, you have to lose an item. And if you fail to lose an item, you have to take what's called a corruption. And if you ever get three corruptions, that's how you lose the game. There's basically uh, two primary ways to lose this game. If you ever get three corruptions, you lose. And if you're, your bag of skulls, which we haven't built yet, but if we run out of skulls and we, can't, we have to draw a skull and there's none left in the bag, we lose. So the skulls can... Um, it's like a pandemic effect, if you will. So this Thieves Guild um, would be a difficult start for us. This Paladin's Order, at the end of your turn, you lose three soldiers. Um, but then you can get, you know, various things here um, that are good. But to be quite honest, and this is because of experience of playing the game, the best place to start if you're going to be the potion guy is the Druid Circle, which is over there on the other end of the board. The Druid Circle has a particular character that is just amazing. Um, so I think that's what we're going to do, is we're going to start on the east side of the map, and, and we'll start with the Druid Circle. I mean, I'm contemplating, you know, maybe I should swap, so that way, you know, it's closer to the camera. But, um, but basically, what you do is you start in the Citadel of the region that you would like to start in, and... Uh, the, the key thing with the Druid Circle, and I know the text is upside down here, but it says spaces have no terrain type, which is something you can live with at the beginning of the game. Uh, maybe later it's a problem, but for now you can live with it. And since we're going to be in the East, the Champion of the East gets two wild advantages in hills. But that, uh, that no terrain type thing means that even though I'm in a hill, I don't get to use that advantage yet. And wild is truly wild, meaning that it's like a wild card. You can use it for any type. Um, they're the best kind to get, in fact. So uh, let's talk about... Yeah, let's not talk about it. Let's just keep going. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go. And so I'm going to put the app somewhere where you can see it pretty easily. And we're going to continue. So now we got to go through setups. So they're saying, remove 10 normal skulls from the supply. You, you start the game with 24. By the way, they give you 25, or they gave me 25. So they, I got a spare skull. So always keep that in mind. You can't just dump them all in. So 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 4 is 10, and that's 20. Right, so uh, that's the 10 skulls they're asking you to remove. So you're going to replace them with the colored ones. 24 total go in the bag. So if there's going to be 10 
of them that have color, the power skulls, then that means you're putting 14 regular skulls in the bag. So you gotta come over here and two, four, six, eight. Oops, I just dropped one again. Two, four, six, eight, ten. All right, so I got ten, and I need two more. Oh, four more. So I'm putting 14 regular skulls in, and then it says I need two red, four blue, and four purple. This is awesome, because the green ones are the ones that stink. Two red, four blue, and four purple. All right, so these make up the bag, and then you just shake up the bag a little bit, and we're gonna just set it over here. Those other skulls, by the way, are out of the game. So we can put these trays out of the game. Uh, we start the game with 24 skulls. Now it's saying put two on each village and citadel. So um, we just have to go through the bag and draw two at a time. And a village, by the way, is this here. And then the citadel is here. And so uh, that's four, eight, 12, 16 skulls out of the 24 are already out on the board. So um, you don't have a lot to work with. Okay, so that's done. Now we take the black mark quest item, which I'm assuming is gonna be bad for us. You cannot spend it for any reason. You spend one spirit to give this to another hero. Well, since we're playing solo, we can't give that to another hero. So that means all the bad things are gonna to happen to us. And give to the player going first. Now they're spawning some uh, some guys. So the brigands are gonna spawn in the west at Idrin Forest. So we take our little brigand, and you can see here it says Idrin Forest, so the brigand's gonna go there. And we're gonna go through a few of these here. So then in the east, the brigands are gonna form in lesser tombstones. So it's way over there. And then in the north, in the peaks of Jin. So the north is here, the peaks of Jin there. And then uh, the Nuri is gonna form an Archmont in the south. And I know it's over here, I just don't know where, there it is, Archmont. Okay, so they seed the board. Some bad guys, and then I believe we're gonna start here. Okay, so this is our quest. Uh, quest in the Iron Tops. Okay, so we gotta find This is our main quest. It's got the little skull on it. So we have to go in the Iron Tops, which is in the south. So, the, and in the Iron Tops, and we have to spend the melee, magic, stealth, humanoid, undead, and beast advantage. And you can use wilds, of course, to, uh, to mitigate that. So the Iron Tops is in the mountain region. So it would have helped if we started a character that actually had a mountain bonus, but that's not the case here. So basically, we have to have different advantages. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six advantages. We start the game with one. So we have that already. So if we can find a way to get, you know, some of these other ones covered, and we can use wild advantages to do that, um, that's how we can satisfy this goal. 
and I guess he would come to my side. So month one, this is what the screen looks like. So normally you're gonna have quests. In the first month, you don't have any quests. Starting month two, we're gonna get quests. So this first month, the tower has not yet awakened. And because of that, we're gonna get sort of like a one free action where we can do something on the board without worrying about any bad events or any bad things happening to us. Um, our main goals, you know, is here. Uh, like I said, there's going to be three quests every month that we're going to be given. Uh, one's going to be to get a companion. One is going to be, if you don't do this, bad things happen to you. And then this one is a uh, guild quest where they try to help you. But if you don't do it, then they hurt you. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a feast and famine one, this one here. Uh, the guild quest, of course, is part of the expansion. So you would only have two if you have the base game. And, um, sorry, I'm trying to get my camera to focus better. It's on manual focus, and I'm trying to switch it off, but it won't. Okay. Um, the, uh, the next thing here is um, if you ever need to fight or do a battle, you would press this, and it's asking you who do you want to battle. Um, there's only two monsters in the game. These two are not in the game yet, so that's why they're not lit up. Uh, this here will show you all the monsters that are currently in the game, and then the number of pips is how powerful they are. So right now, three pips is like at the start of the game. Um, they can become lethal, where they become five pips, and that just means that they, they'll punch you a little bit harder. And it's just showing that there's three and one. The game does keep track of how many are in play. And if you're ever asked to remove a foe, what you do outside of battle, you would go here and you can press these buttons to do exactly that. And then they each have events. So you can see when, when the brigands strike, every hero is gonna have to lose an item. So in my case, I have potions, which I can lose. Um, so I could pretty easily handle that event. Um, this one, uh, each hero loses a spirit if, if they're next to you or on the same space as you. And then the Titan, destroys a building in the kingdom that he's in, and then he moves to a build, to the next building. So he just walks around destroying buildings. And then, of course, the boss, um, he just does what the boss does. Um, and this here is part of the expansion. When you gain companions from each of the different guilds, um, you would uh, then come here and notify the game that you have that com companion with you, and that makes a world of difference for a variety of reasons. Um, but uh, the biggest one being uh, that they, they give you events and, and things like that that can benefit you. Okay, so uh, it is our turn. Uh, we go uh, immediately and we start at the very tippy top of our player board, which says gain a potion. So I'm gonna reach around here and grab a potion. So I got one that can move any foe up to two spaces. So I'm gonna keep that right here in my inventory. I'm just gonna put it over on the left. And now we get to do a uh, move, any of these actions or any of those, which I haven't talked about too much, but let's go into that real quick. A cleanse action lets you remove all skulls from your space. Uh, a battle will let us battle a foe in our space. Here we can complete a quest if there was one. Uh, influence, when we're at a guild hall, we can gain two influence points, which um, adds more points to that board over there. And then reinforce here is uh, at the various places. So at the Citadel, you get to choose. We could either, let me zoom in a little bit for you here. We can gain a potion, right? For free, or we can gain a virtue if we spend five spirit. We can gain uh, a spirit for free at the Sanctuary, or we can remove all of our corruptions for five. We can gain six warriors for free, or we can gain 12 if we spend one. And then at the bazaar, we can gain a free gear or we can gain a treasure if we spend two. It's an or, or, or thing. Now, one thing that's not listed here, and I'm a little um, disappointed in the game, is there is another action that if you're at the guild, um, instead of doing the whatever's listed here, you can spend five of these influence points and then you can upgrade your guild relationship by one and that moves on. Now, one more thing about these guilds. These guilds impact anybody in this region. 
So this says at the end of your turn, lose one item. If I started the game in this region, at the end of my turn, I would be forced to lose one item, no matter what. And, um, and then if you upgrade the guild, then it becomes end of month, etc. So it becomes a little bit less painful, and then eventually it gives you nice rewards when you get up there. If I'm not physically in this realm, <clears throat> um, at the end of the turn, this does not impact me. So this only impacts me if I ever come into this realm and end my turn in the realm. So the only thing that impacts me right now is the realm, the Druid Circle, which says that spaces have no terrain type. And what that means is uh, this here, I get two wild advantages if I'm in hills. Uh, the spaces have no terrain type. So even though I'm standing in the hills, right now I can't count that as hills. That's, that's what it's telling me. <clears throat> so that's a pretty easy one to start in, which is why I'm starting way over there. But the biggest reason is Borgogne, Borgogne, I think is her name. There's a particular companion over there that if you're the potion hunter, you want that companion. Absolutely want that companion. It's the best in the game for what you need to do. So uh, it is our turn. I am standing in the Citadel. You can see there's two skulls there, and I'm going to do a cleanse action, which is this one. And so what that does is that takes these two skulls off the building and I'm putting them back in the bag. And then after I do that, it says I can gain two spirit, which I will do. So, sorry, I'm moving the camera so much. So I'm gonna gain two spirit. It comes on my board. I now have three. And then I have a move and a reinforce. So if I stay at the Citadel, I can gain a potion um, but I don't have the five spirit to do a virtue, or I can try to go somewhere else. Now, if I'm ever at a bazaar, I can spend one less spirit to gain a treasure. So a treasure only costs me one spirit instead of two. And so I can look at things like, um, you know, when you defeat a stealth potion, gain a potion. These give you different advantages, like this one once per turn, when you enter a space with a foe, I can place that foe on any other space which is nice because you, you know, terrain advantages. You want to push them to where you have terrain. One in particular I'm looking at is if I reinforce at a sanctuary, I can gain spirit equal to the current month. So right now it's month one, which not very good, but once it's month five, I can get five spirit just for doing a reinforce there. And then also look here, I get a humanoid advantage, which I need more than one. And uh, that's a really nice card. So if I come over here and look at our situation, the sanctuary is here. Uh, these two skulls has the guild hall, which I would like to go to and maybe do a reinforce there. Um, hmm. Um... What should I do? I'm going to go to the Sanctuary. So that's two of my three movement points. And uh, we're going to go ahead and buy that treasure for one instead of two. So I'm going to spend one spirit. And I am going to get this Crown of Azkul. And uh, that gives me a humanoid advantage. So... Um, your player board shows spot for four treasures. So you can only have four. Um, you, everything else is pretty much unlimited. The gear, there's only six possible gear to get, and you can only have one of each. So you don't get to carry two leather armors. Now, one thing I could have done is when you're doing a reinforce action, you always have an opportunity to haggle. This is something that comes from the base game. In the base game, when you haggled, it was like an electronic button that you pressed to see if he would reduce his price. And you eventually learned that, like, you know, food was roughly, you know, you would spend between one and two gold per food. Um, so when he was trying to ask for four gold per food, you could haggle him, and it was pretty safe that he would reduce his price because he was trying to rip you off. But if the food was down to one gold per food and you tried to haggle him, he would get upset with you and then close the shop, and then you lose your whole action. Well, now they're representing that with a die. And then it doesn't matter which of these actions I do. I could have rolled a die, for example. And in this case, I would have lost my action. 
because um, basically I upset the, the shopkeeper, and so I would not have been able to gain that treasure. And two sides of the die, by the way, have him. So two out of the six, right? So what is that, a one-third chance? Uh, one of the sides does nothing. So basically you just do your action normally. Another one, you would gain three soldiers. This one gives you a free gear. That gives you a free potion. So this die can be very powerful, but it's very risky. Now, um, one of the treasures that you can get in this game lets you ignore the haggle part of the die. Like basically you can't lose the haggle. You become a haggle master. And when you get that treasure, you basically get to roll that die without fear for the rest of the game. And that is an awesome treasure. And so, by the way, when we buy a treasure, we replace it. So this one says, do not spend spirit for glyphs facing you. That's another concept in the game we haven't run into yet. But um, when uh, the tower starts showing glyphs on the side, um, it'll cost us extra spirit to do certain actions. This is going to make us immune to that. Now, one of the things i got to bear in mind is I'm trying to stock up my humanoid uh, advantages, but I need advantages of other types in order to defeat this, um, uh, to finish this quest. So i got to be mindful of that. But for now, uh, I'm going to leave it be. And uh, I want the two humanoid advantages for now, and I think that's a, a good way to go. Okay, so I'm not going to move anymore. I'm going to end my turn right where I'm at. I did the reinforce action. So the last thing that's left is I have to drop a skull in the tower. And so we just take our bag, find a random something something. So it doesn't matter what skull you draw at the time, although it will matter later. And then you just drop it in the top of the tower. And then basically it stays in the tower. And the tower recognizes immediately, the app does, that you just ended your turn. So no events are happening. Well, actually, it's the end of the month. So the tower is awakening. So he invades the soul on the one who bears the mark. The player with the back black mark gains a corruption. So I get a corruption right away. And so I'm already one third of the way towards losing the game. I'm just going to shuffle these real quick. So that's not good. All right, so we got a corruption already. After I reinforce, I have to immediately end my turn, which means the reinforce has to be the last thing I do on my turn. The month ends. So if I had any month end effects, which I don't, but then um, this is an expansion concept. I gain one influence for each building that has no skulls. So every realm has two buildings with skulls and without, except for my starting realm. So two, four, six. And then I cleansed over here. So I have three of them, seven, eight, nine. That's one of the reasons I cleansed. So I come over here and I grab five, Six, seven, eight, nine. So now we got quite a bit of uh, influence built up that we can spend later. And it's month two. So we get some new quests here. The first one is Grigor has a golden pelt that protected him from harm. So we have to complete the Rock on the Shore dungeon to gain the Pelt of the Golden Wolf quest item. So it's uh, basically we're going to spawn a dungeon in the east. So the dungeon they want us to spawn is um, three rivers, and it's an encampment. So in the east. So first thing we got to do is find the encampment one. It's this one. So this one's a nice one for us because it's humanoid. So we already have two humanoid advantages. And that goes into the three rivers which is in the east. So the east is where we started. And then Three Rivers is this place here, right next to the bazaar. Oh, you know what? I went to the sanctuary to buy that treasure. I went to the wrong place. The bazaar is where you buy treasures. One, two, I couldn't have done that. Okay, so I can't buy that treasure that I just bought. So what I'm going to do is I just have to retcon that a little bit. No worries. I don't have the treasure anymore. Instead, I'm going to go here. This blue skull makes me lose a spirit anytime I enter the space with it. And instead, I'm spending five influence to increase this up by one, and I would have gotten this guy.
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that instead. It doesn't change the outcome of the game too much other than I just have five less spirit here. And uh, that's totally fine because we just gained 11 or two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we just gained 11. So um, we're fine, we're fine. Just no treasure. And it still cost me the same one spirit to do this action. Um, we're fine. The only thing that I missed was I needed to tell the game I have Ruska the Barbarian. Because as I gained up the influence of the guild, uh, you unlock these companions. And so now he will give me a wild advantage on any space that has no buildings. And I can reinforce on a space without a building. If I do, I gain six soldiers or a potion. So not a bad one to combo with my potion guy. All right, so this is spawned. Then uh, here, quest in the grass sea and spend three potions or the hero with the black mark will lose warriors. So this is in the west, which is all the way on the other end of the map. And a uh, couple of things. The first one is a little tree because that's your uh, companion quest. And then this next one is, where is it? Grass sea up here so this is the one where I, if i don't do it i'm going to get punished in some way but it's a punishment just running around the map to go do it and then the, i'm going to get this next one here quest in the egan's end and spend three spirit to sway the nobles so the thieves guild put us on a quest in the north at a place called egan's end Oh, the north is over here. I'm looking in the wrong end. So right there. So that's not as far away. And I have to spend three spirit there. Now, one thing I forgot to do is we get to look at the item that we would get. And it's like a pelt. I think it was the golden wolf pelt. Um, it looks right. Yeah. Okay, so if we do that dungeon that the companion offered us, the Golden Wolf Pelt lets us prevent six soldier losses per battle card, which that's pretty significant. Um, it's not a bad item. Is it worth all the actions to go do? That's always the question. Okay, so then I hit continue, and the app is saying month two begins, and there we go. Now, you might be wondering, like, how on earth do you rem remember everything? Well, you don't have to. It tells you right here. So the golden pelt is the reward item. I have to go here and complete that dungeon. Here, I have to go and spend three potions. Or here, I have to go and spend three spirit. And then here, I just need one of each advantage. So all the quests are laid out for you. And it's just a matter of I have roughly six turns to do them. Um, now, how do I know that? The rule book actually tells you. There's a little chart in the rule book that um, I thought was pretty helpful in this regard. So here you can see the player count. So it says uh, one player, six turns, two players, seven turns. But remember, that's divided among the two players. So that's why I said it's roughly three turns each. Three players, eight turns, four players, nine turns. So a four-player game is going to be longer because it's nine turns per month. Um, this game can turn into a three-hour-plus game pretty quick. Okay, so it's our turn. Uh, we're in month two now. I don't have that treasure yet that I uh, had originally purchased. Um, so uh, And my apologies. I got something going on with my camera here. There we go. Okay. I don't know what was going on, but hopefully that didn't mess anything up for you guys. Okay. So I'm sitting over there. I have... Oh, I forgot to tell the game I got Ruska. So I need to do that. So we're going to go over here. I would have gotten him on turn one. So that was my mistake. The reinforce action is the last thing I have to do in my turn. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is cleanse... 
and get rid of two more skulls. That's always helpful just because now I don't have to pay a penalty every time I go to that space. And whenever I reinforce or do any of the heroic actions, I get two. So that puts me up to four. I'm not in enough to unlock a, a virtue yet. Um, but now I have to move. Or if I reinforce, I have to immediately end my turn. I'm going to reinforce right here at the guild hole. And I'm going to spend five more influence. And we're going to unlock Burgoyne the Herbalist, which gives me two wild advantage in forests. And here you can see that the penalty of spaces have no terrain type is gone. And I actually get two wild advantage in grasslands as well. So um, what are wild advantages? It's easier to explain when we actually do a battle. But see how there's three pips here? Let's say that um, I'm fighting this guy and he says you're going to lose ten warriors. I can spend one advantage, which turns that three pips down to two pips. And then that two pips might be lose five warriors instead of ten. Because the number of pips is how, how hard the card damages you. So then I might say, okay, well, I'm going to spend another advantage to reduce it from two pips down to one. Well, sometimes, like, if you go down to one, it could be, like, you know, lose nothing, right? No effect. Or it could be you gain five warriors. So sometimes you can actually get a bonus. Like, you actually gain items for having advantage. So when you go up to battle these guys, they're all going to cause... You're going to draw cards, which are in the app. So you're going to select cards in the app. And those cards are going to damage you in some way. If you can't afford to pay the damages, you gain a corruption, which is one of the ways you lose the game. And if you have advantages, you can spend them to reduce the damage. And if you reduce it enough, you could possibly even gain items. So that's um, what's going on here. And so we just got Burgoyne. Now, why is Burgoyne so good? Well, the biggest one is, okay, fine, I get two... Advantages in forests, that's really nice. When you spend a potion, I gain an influence, so that's also nice. But the biggest one is right here. She provides potions during events. And uh, you'll see it when it comes. It is super duper nice. Now, one thing I forgot to do is at the start of my turn, I gain a potion. So let's do that. And I got spend to remove up to two skulls from any building. I'm going to spend that actually right away, um, or spend it now, and um, I get an influence because of her card. So we're gonna reach over here, grab one of these influence tokens. It goes on the board. Um, I forgot to take one of the fives off the board because we just spent five. And then I get to remove two from somewhere else. So uh, what you wanna do is you wanna remove the power ones because they hurt you the most. And I'm going to remove these two over here. And just putting more skulls in the bag is always good. Okay, that forces me to end my turn. Um, the Druid Circle is already up to level 3. And that's basically all I've been doing is just investing in the Druid Circle so far. And so um, I need to grab a skull and end our turn. So I'm reaching into the bag, and I pulled out a blue one. So let's drop it in the tower, and it dropped out. So when a skull comes out, I have to place it in any of these buildings. And so I'm just going to place it in the, in the building I'm already in. We'll go ahead and do that. Okay. So now it's telling me there's no events between turns. So now it's a new turn. So I'm going to go grab a potion. So we can spend this to gain six warriors. And it's another turn for us. So uh, one of the things I'm going to want to do is go uh, unlock a virtue. And then, of course, I need to get rid of this. But um, I'm going to do one more thing here where I'm going to just... Uh, One of the actions I can do is just gain influence, uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to move two spaces, and we're going to fight this guy. And then uh, 
Then I'll move a third space to here and we can either get that treasure that we were gonna get or we can do the dungeon and finish the monthly quest. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go fight that guy first. Well, we can't do the quest because if I fight the guy, that that's, that's up here. And then the quest is also up here. So I would have to buy a treasure then. Um, I won't be able to do the quest, but I could at least um, do the battle. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, so I'm gonna, we're gonna go ahead and battle this guy. So we're gonna click on battle. We're fighting a brigand. Okay, so this is his deck of cards. He is a level two uh, person, level two uh, enemy. So you can see there's level two, level three, level four. So that means I'm gonna have to draw two cards. And he's humanoid in stealth. So that'll come into play very soon here. So you can see humanoid in stealth and I can spend up to 10 advantages. Well, I have a humanoid advantage here, right? I had another one when I bought that thing, but I don't anymore. I am currently in grasslands which if you see here, that says I get plus two advantages in grasslands, plus two wild advantage. And then this is, I get an advantage if I'm in a space without a building and I'm not. Here I get, if I'm in a forest, I'm not in a forest, but the two wild advantages help me. So I have three total advantages. So this one's telling me to lose five warriors. So I can, for example, hit this once and now I'm just gonna lose three warriors instead. And I don't know what this other card says. I have three advantages, and you can see I can only do one more pip loss. You can't reduce this to zero pips. So I can spend two pips on one of these and one pip on the other. I'm gonna go ahead and lose the three warriors. I can afford that. So I'll spend five and get two back. So I'm down to four warriors. And I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. And then this is lose one gear or five. So here I have two more advantages. So I'm going to just press one and press two. And now I may gain a gear and that's awesome. Totally awesome. So I'm going to look over here and I'm going to grab right here. This gives me a stealth advantage. So that gear um, is going to help me, especially towards the final quest, but the stealth advantage will help me against these creatures too. And then I will confirm. And then the token's removed. You always, assuming that, that you, you didn't like lose the game, you're always going to win your battles. So the creature's removed. Go ahead and put him over here. And then like I said, I'm gonna finish my move at the bazaar. And then we're gonna spend the one to buy that treasure that I originally purchased but don't have. Now I have four, I get two after finishing the battle. So that puts me to six. And then I have this over here, which says, when you reinforce at a bazaar, spend one less to gain a treasure. So I'm only gonna spend one instead of two. And then I'm gonna get that, that humanoid advantage thing that we originally purchased by mistake. Okay, so that puts me to the end of my turn. And I'm going to grab a die from the bag. We're gonna drop it in the tower. Nothing came out and events are happening. A seal's broken. So this is an interesting aspect of the game. So the tower is lighting up all the way around to this side. So see the two at the bottom? And then you have to find which level the tower's lit up. And I believe it's lit up right here at the top. So what you do is you remove that and then it reveals either a hole or a glyph. So in this case, it's a hole. So that's another opportunity for whenever you drop skulls, there's now an opportunity for a skull to come out here and at the bottom. So skulls might come out more quickly over there. But there's a little, um, band inside of there that rotates around. So sometimes a glyph will appear instead. And that is my home rim, realm. So whatever glyphs appear over there, I have to be mindful because those glyphs impact me as a player. Uh, if there's a glyph facing this way, 
it doesn't impact me, even if I'm over on this end. Um, it's only your home realm. So now it's saying, move all foes one space towards their guild in the kingdom. Oh, we got more and more stuff happening. So this is moving towards the guild. This one's moving towards the guild. And this guy over here is moving towards the guild. So they're trying to reduce the strength of your guilds. And there's nobody in our realm. We, we conquered him. <clears throat> Agents of the tower infiltrating a village, waiting for the one with the black mark to approach. And then brigands are spawning in the east and the outer king hills. So let me put this down. We've got another set of brigands spawning in the exact region we just destroyed them in the outer king hills, so right there. Okay, so I know a lot of camera moving. My apologies there. Oh, and now we got a clan of Nurei that spawned in Ulamel's Hollow in the south. So that's over here somewhere. And we've got two clans over there. That's not good. All right, so now on month two, turn three. Tells me so there. I gain another potion. So I got another one, two of them here that give me six. So um, what I want to do now is I would like to go to the Citadel and get my virtue. However, I'm more than three spaces away. I could always spend a spirit to double my move, but I don't want to do that. So I think what I'm going to do is while I'm standing there, let's try that dungeon and see if I can finish that dungeon over there. And then I'm going to move over to the guild and raise it up a level one final time so we max out the level of the guild. Uh, that's what I want to do. And then just keep moving towards the citadel and we can maybe hit it next turn. So I'm going to go ahead and do the dungeon, which is this. And there's only one dungeon in the game at the moment. So the way this works is it's just like a battle except you're choosing rooms to move into. And one of these rooms is your quest. And as soon as you find it, then the dungeon is conquered. So uh, we don't know how many rooms there are, um, but we do know that it's humanoid. So the humanoid advantages apply. So we have one humanoid advantage here and one here, that's two. But we're still in the grasslands, right? And so we get two more advantages because we have plus two grassland advantages. So we're at four. Uh, so four advantages for this particular mission. And I'm going to move this so I can put the camera down and not be so shaky. I know there's a bit of a glare, but hopefully you could still see. So the first room is saying lose one spirit and three warriors. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to use one of my four advantages. And I only get to use it once. There is no pips on this one. And now there's no losses. Perfect. So now we're going to continue. And there's only one way to go, so we're going to go there. It says lose eight warriors. I don't have eight warriors, so I'm going to use my pip advantage. There I gain a warrior. So that's good. So we've used two of our four advantages. I'm not sure how good this is. Now I have three ways to go. I'm going to keep going straight. No losses. Perfect. Straight again, and I found it. Upon an altar lies the golden pelt. So we now have the golden pelt that says, if I'm in a battle and it tells me to lose warriors, I can prevent six losses, which is huge. Oh, well, it's huge if you need to lose warriors. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And we completed the quest. All right. So I'm going to put this back, and what happens is the quest goes, or the dungeon goes away, the quest marker is done, and the game knows that. And so now I'm going to do my movement. So I'm going to do one, two. This blue skull makes me lose one. However, I gain two for doing the quest, so I'm going to get one back, plus one more. Okay. 
I'm going to do a reinforce action here, which is going to force me to lose my turn, so I can't like keep moving, which is what I really would like to do. So I'm going to spend five influence, like so, and then move the Druid Circle up to max level, rank four. And then spaces have all terrain types now. So from now on, anything I do in this realm, it's grasslands, it's forest, and it's hills. And I'm going to get two, four, six wild advantages for anything I do. But unfortunately, it's only in that realm. As soon as I leave that realm and go to one of these other ones, <coughs> I'm sort of screwed. So, But I do get one more guy, and this one gives me magic advantage. So if you're keeping track at home, I now have magic, humanoid. Actually, that's all I have, magic and humanoid. So I have two of the however many I need to do the final quest. Oh, I'm sorry, stealth. I have three. Magic, humanoid, and stealth are all covered now. So I have three of them. I just need to figure out how to get wild advantages in the mountains over there, and then I would be good to go. Actually, uh, I got a fourth one. Plus one wild advantage on a space without a building, so that quest location has no building. So there you go. I got four of them already. Okay, um, so I did that, and now I gotta tell the app I have that person. So you can see, I've already unlocked all three companions for the Druid Circle, but none of the other ones yet. And then we're gonna go back, and it's time to drop the skull. I do have to get rid of that corruption, by the way. It's not something you should dink around with, having one in your... Okay, so we are done, and events are going to happen. Ruska. The player with Ruska gains one spirit if they're not on a building. I'm on a building, so I don't get anything. So that's the advantage of having companions. They give you stuff during events in between turns. So it can be really helpful. All right. Um, so now here's my next dilemma. I got another turn here. So I'm going to gain a potion again. This one gives me a spirit. So I'm going to spend this one to move any foe up to two spaces. And I'll show you in a second what I'm doing with that. Um, but whenever I do spend a potion, I gain an influence. So let's not forget that. So I'm up to four there. So what I, I have this limitation where as soon as I reinforce my turn ends, and I only have three movement points. So what I'm doing is I'm moving this bad guy to where the Citadel is, and then I'm gonna move one, two, three, and I'm gonna battle, and then I'm gonna reinforce at the Citadel. So the battle is going to be glorious. I picked two cards. All right. Because I'm at level four, I have all terrain types. So plus two for wild grass, plus two for forest, uh, plus two for hills. So that's six, seven, eight for the humanoid. And then nine for the stealth. I have nine advantages, and there's only four total pips. So I'm going to be able to upgrade everything. So there I gain a potion. I can move any hero three spaces. Here, I gain three warriors. It puts me back up to eight. And you heard the tower. How? Because I had all advantages and I completely advantaged the crap out of this. Like, I dominated those brigands. They didn't even stand a chance. So they're gone. And in doing so, I gain two more spirit. But now I need to do a reinforce action where I'm going to gain a virtue. So I'm going to spend five. One, two, three, four five and the virtue i'm going to unlock is this one and it says when you spend a potion double the number on it and that's the best power the relic hunter has in the game bar none um 
So I'm actually going to start spending some potions before I end my turn. Uh, I do need to end my turn. Or no, it says immediately end your turn. So I guess I don't get to spend the potions yet. But I will. I will soon. So now what, what, what it means is instead of moving three spaces, I can move six spaces. Instead of gaining six warriors, I'm going to gain 12. And so that's why I've been sort of stocking up on my cards. I didn't want to spend that many of them until I got that virtue unlocked. Now that I have it unlocked, we're cooking with butter. So um, let's go ahead and grab a skull and end the turn. I do need to get rid of a corruption, folks. I am well aware of that. My plan is the realm I'm in is rocking. Like, if I need to do anything in that realm, I can completely spank. I can spank the final boss right now. I'm so powerful in that realm. Um, however, I need to go into these other realms and finish quests there. And that's going to create problems because, for example, here at the end of your turn, you lose three soldiers. And so, you know, the dilemma I have is do I spend the, you know, the points to raise those up? Uh, maybe I do, maybe I don't. That's part of the, the challenge. All right, well, anyways, let's drop our skull. All right, that I believe locked up. And here we go. We got events. Burgoyne. The player with Burgoyne may spend any number of spirit to gain twice that number of potions. So I have three spirit, and I will spend all three. And now we get... This is why I wanted Burgoyne, folks. One, two, three, four, five, six potions that are now all doubled. And here we go. Uh, move a foe, move a hero, uh, remove skulls from a building, get plus one wild advantage, which is now plus two wild advantage, uh, gain money or spirit, remove two skulls from... So uh, this is where the Potion Hunter becomes super powerful. And, you know, and I was sitting there thinking, eh, this is not a great character to solo. It is if you understand the game well enough to do what I just did. You've got to start where the Druid Circle is. <clears throat> Trust me. This Burgoyne is the best thing since sliced bread. Um, now, I'm out of spirit. So one thing that can happen is if the game makes me lose spirit right now, I don't have any, so I could be in big trouble. But um, I'm at the start of my next turn. I get another potion. Look at that, another wild advantage one. So I'm just racking up the potions, okay? And so the start of my turn, and I am gonna do exactly what I told you I would do. And I'm gonna spend both of these to get 12 each. So I'm gonna get 24 warriors. And they go to the bottom of the deck. So I can get them back again. So five. 10, 15, 20, 25, and I'll put one back in. Okay, then I'm going to spend these to get four spirit. Because it was two each. So there we go. I don't look like I'm worse for the wear, do I? I am going to spend these to remove two skulls from any building. So I'm going to remove two skulls from two different buildings. And I'm just going to go over here and clean up the skulls in the areas that I'm not currently uh, questing in. Okay, now I got to decide what to do for my turn. And I also need to do a break. I'm at an hour and 34. I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, and then we'll start back up uh, deciding what to do with my turn. So um, thanks for watching. As always, stay awesome, stay healthy and safe, and we'll see you for video two.